Hi, everyone. I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Jackie Gaddis. I'm the Assistive Technology Program Manager with the ALS Association Evergreen Chapter. And thank you so much for taking the time today to join us for our Home Innovation and Adaptions, a Clinical and Caregiver Perspective webinar today. So today we're going to have two speakers. Um, our clinical uh, perspective is going to come from Karen Wallace, and our caregiver perspective is going to come from Darla Burge. So um, I guess we'll just get started. Our first speaker, um, Karen Wallace, she'll present first. She's an occupational therapist and a certified assistive technology professional. She has been an OT for almost 20 years, been at the VA. She's been at the VA for six of those years and works in home-based primary care. So she sees lots of home environments and, uh, and helps a lot of people. And this is perfect for her to share with you guys. Um, she runs two wheelchair clinics and is also um, an OT that attends an ALS clinic in Idaho as well. Okay, so we'll get started and we'll uh, take it away to you, Karen. Um, give me just a moment. I'm going to pull up your slides, okay? No problem. I want to, first of all, just thank Jackie because she's amazing and you guys are just so incredibly lucky to have her. And I got a chance to watch some of her videos, which are amazing. So if you all have not watched those, then please do. I, uh, some of the things that I'm going to talk about today, she has in some of her videos, plus you know, plus worlds more. So um, oh, gotta, thanks, Karen. <laughs> gotta give it up to you, Jackie. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I see you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. You gave me enough time to get it up. Yeah. Just little, little I can delayed. talk about you some more if we need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, it's a, the slide on there is a little bit wonky. Is that coming into focus or is it just for me? There we go. I want to make sure that I'm got control there. Yeah, it's a little it's a little blurry for me. So I don't know if that's blurry for anybody else. Um, I can I can read some of these if it's hard to read, but um, so as far as innovations, ideas, and adaptations, um, I, I just want to start off by saying, you know, all ideas are valuable, all ideas are worthy. If if you think of something and you think, gosh, I really want to try that, but it sounds absolutely crazy, try it. As long as it's not going to, you know, maybe be harmful, I would say a little creativity can go a long way in uh, figuring out what you need for yourself or for a loved one or for a client for that matter. Um, please just don't be afraid to try because we all had to have to start someplace with what we, uh, with our little bag of tricks and what we, what we learn and give away to other people. So I'm trying to advance see if that worked. Of course, this works in uh, <laughs> testing. And then... Every time we practice, it works. <laughs> and now I need to advance. All right, let me I'm going to try one more thing. Thanks, everyone okay. for being patient. I'm going to actually uh, see if I can stop the share and get better quality for your slides because I see the little blurriness on okay. my, my Well, I, I can add to this while she's doing all of that, that um, networking and what we're doing right now and what you all do in, in group chats and, um, and support meetings and all of that stuff is an absolutely fantastic time to find uh, little ideas and maybe something that worked for somebody else that you can try. So please don't afraid to ask as well and ask your providers, um, you know, kind of, hey, we're having this issue. You got any ideas? Because um, most people have kind of gone through some of some very similar things before. So all right, trying again. OK. Oh, man. That or I can I can make you advance my slides for me. <laughs> Either way, let me see how this okay. one works and then, uh, all right, okay. Oh, it's still a little blurry. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, 
All right. Well, um, I'm sorry. It, you should be able to advance now. So, okay. I'm going to. I'm trying All several right. things. <laughs> I'm trying my down arrow. I'm trying my forward arrow and I'm trying my mouse and none of the above you has worked. My... Okay. So. I'll advance for you if you, oh, there it goes. That hey. just worked. All right. All right. Now just hopefully it doesn't advance the three times that I hit things. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> and it is a little blurry, you guys. I'm sorry about that. Um, sorry. So basically this is just a quote from AOTA, which is um, Association of Occupational Therapy Associations, American Occupational Therapy Association. An occupational therapy practitioner will keep the focus on things you need and want to do, your goals, your activities, your independence. I'm just pretty, pretty much giving a shout out to OTs, um, of which Jackie is also um, an OTA. So thank you to OTs around the world. Um, if you have worked with an OT, maybe you understand what I mean. And if you haven't worked with an OT, then please find one because um, our, our job is basically trying to adapt the world to make it work for you or maybe sometimes even adapt you <laughs> to help you work in the world. Um, so if you feel like, you know, maybe you could use some OT visits or you know somebody who could use some OT visits, then please ask your provider. Um, it's, it's always available through home health, through outpatient, whatever. Um, it's a great time to ask somebody that, hey, I'm having this problem with this activity of daily living and um, they can usually help you figure out some, some great ideas. All right. So we're also going to talk about how to think like an OT. If I can figure out how to get this to go forward. How about I, I'll just, I'll just get okay. to moving forward. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry. My internet was acting funny today. So maybe that's okay. it. Uh, Next. Okay. Looking at the world like an OT. So this is some of the stuff that we go over for years and years and years in school, and it's just, just drilled into our heads. So um, something that you can kind of do to help you figure out, okay, I want to, I want to make up something. First thing you want to do, what's the goal? What do we want to be able to do? Oh, I want to be able to, um, you know, hold my fork easier. Okay. That's the goal. We're going to narrow it down. What to determine what your strengths and weaknesses are. All right. I've got good use of my right hand, not very good use of my left hand. I may be left-handed, but you know, if the right hand works better, we're going to have to work with that. Um, figure out, okay, how's the grip? How's the, um, how's your dexterity? All of those little things and figuring out where's your strength, where's your weaknesses, researching if something already exists. So Googling at the world and seeing what's out there. There is a lot of things and little tips and, and, and sometimes it's equipment to buy, sometimes it's equipment to make. Um, and then if you can't find anything or if you need to kind of modify stuff, develop your own, keep trying, keep trying. I throw this uh, Sabo uh, picture up here because that was actually developed by two OTs over 20 years ago. And um, that is now a worldwide product. And it just came out of something that they decided um, that needed to see happen in, in therapy. So, um, Sometimes it can be uh, productive, lucrative. Um, go ahead and next. So my first rule for everything is please first do no harm. It may be a great idea in theory, but it may be actually a horrible idea. <laughs> so um, we always think of safety as your absolute number one priority in any adaptation. Um, whether it's safety for the things around you, safety for the person who might be using it, or the person who might be helping the person use it. So caregivers as well. We want to make sure that everybody stays safe with whatever that we do. Um, okay, next. Um, so first thing we're going to go over is some wheelchair issues. Um, so again, safety first. The first thing I want to make sure is that uh, we make no absolute permanent changes to a wheelchair, no welding, no, um, you know, cutting bars <laughs> off or anything like that. That is not what this is about. Everything should be able to be removed. Um, and easily. So if you needed it to be removed for a transfer or you, you know it was gonna get in the way of something, boom, you can usually just pop it right off. Um, 
if you change the, the, the actual framework of your wheelchair, you could lose uh, void your warranty on that. And not only that, it could be quite dangerous. So we wanna make sure that um, any of the things that we do are, are very safe. Alternative drives are another thing. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna show a couple of photos of that, uh, that if you're using a power chair, there are many, I mean, just so many different ways to drive a power chair. Um, from your head to your shoulder, to your elbow, to your hand and knee and um, foot and all of the above. Uh, there's switches, there's controllers, there's um, buttons <laughs> that will actually drive a wheelchair. So nothing is impossible. It really, uh, there's so many things out there and um, vendors and your therapist should be uh, equipped at some point to be able to help trial some things, try it out, see what works, doesn't work, try something new. And, and a lot of these things that we talk about, they may be really short-term solutions. It may be like, okay, well, this is going to work for me for a month. And then you're going to see some changes and go, okay, I may have to ditch that and try something new or alter it just a little bit. Um, so staying really flexible is, is very, very important so that you can, uh, just keep rolling with the punches on this one. Um, I use the track system uh, or the frame on a lot of wheelchairs. Those are places where they put a lot of accessories already. Um, and I'm not sure if I have uh, control of that part, but uh, it's at the base right under the seat cushion. There's a frame on that power chair and that's where I can put a lot of uh, you know thigh guards and guides and things like that that uh, help with positioning, as well as being able to hook on some accessories. And I'll show you that in a minute, uh, as well as positioning too. Positioning is incredibly important in your wheelchair um, that if you're going to be in something for more than an hour, you better be comfortable. Um, it better not be something that you're going to start to feel aches in your bottom or in your legs or in your shoulders or anything like that. So um, it should also be movable. Um, that both of these are tilt and space chairs. The top one is a manual, the bottom one is a power. Um, they can go through all different, different um, levels of tilt and recline and those kind of things to really help uh, balance out pressure. So, okay. That handsome man right there is, uh, is Denny. And we started working on having him do a chin drive. And so that, that, uh, that chin drive was actually mounted over his shoulders and across his chest and it strap went around his chest, but, and he would try to drive that one with his chin and he did really well for a while. Um, but one thing he noticed is it bounced around too much. So it moved around. And when he was going up and down ramps and things like that, um, it would, it would move out of the way and he wouldn't be able to hang on to it. Uh, so he kept saying, I want to be able to drive with my mouth. I think that I think I'd be able to do much better with that. So we ended up trialing out um, just popping off the joystick, which you can do on any chair. They, they really just pop right off. Um, they're not glued on or anything. Um, and we stuck just a piece of tubing that I bought uh, in bulk <laughs> onto the end of this. It was a, it, I bought the right size. It was the perfect fit. And then we just cut kind of to whatever length he needed for that. And he was able to try it out, used it in his mouth and was great and did a great job. So, you know, trying out a very simple, cheap alternative first and seeing, okay, well, is this actually gonna work? And then Jackie, if you can go to the next slide, what we ended up actually doing, this was the final product that, yeah, we're not going to stick with the tube for the rest of his life. So <laughs> we actually ended up getting um, a great setup that is now not attached to his body. It's now attached to the headrest that comes around. He can still drive with his mouth. It's a mini um, controller, so it can either be used on the chin or he uses it right kind of on his lips or his tongue can do it. Um, and then he's got the controller at the forehead so he can change modes and go to a drive mode or change his seating position, those kind of things. Um, so just know, you know, it, it, the little, the little things that we can try out sometimes are just really short-term options until we can figure out, okay, what's the final, the final uh, product going to look like. So 
Um, all right, and next. So this is um, probably hard to see, but it is what I was talking about earlier using that track system. This is um, a permobile power chair. There is a track system right underneath the cushion of the chair. And that used to be a thigh guide, which is the little pads that go you know, next to your thigh and kind of help hold your legs in place. This one, I took the padding off of, drilled a hole in the, um, I'm pointing at the screen like you guys can see me, <laughs> drilled a hole in the holder of it. And we used actually a gooseneck system that is a drink holder. So I'll have another picture on there. I also at one point did um, attach an IV pole for one of my veterans who had um, uh, a gravity fed feeding tube. And so he needed to attach to his chair because otherwise he was dragging around a pole all the time and that was really annoying. So we just attached an IV pole to that and uh, so he could have his, um, his feeding um, with him all the time. Um, so, okay, go to the next one. You can kind of see this and I'll tell you the reason why I did this. So this is a drink holder that is attached to that um, base. On his chair, he has already has so much stuff on the armrest, so we didn't really have room to put um, a regular drink holder that comes with the chair. Plus, being able to get it a little closer to the body, it's a shorter straw, it's not as much effort to really suck out of that straw, and it left more room at the front. It moves out of the way, it's, it's a quick release, so it can come right off, and um, is a is a pretty good solution for you know if you needed still some more uh, attachments where you don't have other room. If you look at the bottom there, you can also see how Dave drives his chair. This is Dave's chair. Um, he drives his chair with his right foot. So you can see down there on the foot plate is looks a little bit like kind of an acceleration pedal. That is what um, Dave drives with. So again, you can drive with anything. It's all it's all great. Um, all righty, and you can move on. Okay, so these are other just ex wheelchair accessories, things um, for especially easy on uh, manual wheelchairs or tilt and space chairs where you have kind of a little bit more canes to work with and things, stroller attachments, um, uh, bicycle attachments, They're, they can be great to use on wheelchairs. Um, these are all things that usually can attach to something round, like the round cane or something like that. That's an umbrella holder, fan, hooks, so you can have your bags and things with you. Um, each of the, the power chairs should have bag or should have hooks as well for the back of the chair um, that we have used in past for vent holders and things like that, because sometimes those vent trays are really um, enormous. So next, I'm going to try to speed up. I think I'm going too slow. Uh, positioning needs. Um, this, I, I want to leave some of this up to your clinicians because some of these things need to be looked at by a, by a clinician. Um, otherwise, that this could be maybe a very short-term um, solution if, you know, if all of a sudden you get to something on your wheelchair and it's bugging you and you can't get out to see a therapist for a while, these are some good uh, quick, quick hacks, as we say. Um, this is pool noodle. So pool noodles are awesome. You can cut them long ways, you can cut them short ways, and they can wrap around things. Uh, this one, in fact, is just kind of trialing some different areas of where should we put more support? Maybe we should have some separation of legs or uh, more support at each side, those kind of things. Good just to try it out, see where we need it before we order a bunch of expensive cushions and things like that. So um, go ahead and go next. This is uh, just the pipe insulation. It's a lot more flexible than a pool noodle. So this can be good for, this is just a leg rest. Um, sometimes if you're ever sitting in a regular manual wheelchair, those leg rests can, can start to really hurt. They make gel cushions. They make all sorts of things that are made for this, um, which, you know, if you can find someone to order that for you, or you can order it um, online is fine. But if this is a quick fix, or if it works for you, then that that's great. Um, the pool noodle can be cut in a spiral fashion and then just wrapped around 
uh, a poll if you don't have a, you know, if both ends are being taken up. Um, this is actually the back of a tilt and space wheelchair where um, if you've ever pushed one of these, sometimes you can <laughs> slam your shins into the uh, cross brace there. So I thought this was a great idea. I get a lot of these from a place called Seating Hacks. They're, they're on Instagram. I met these two ladies, they're out of Canada and um, they're fantastic. And they have their whole Instagram account is just hacks for seating and things like that. A lot of it is for clinicians, but they do have some really great ideas on there. So if you're on Instagram and you want to look them up, that would be great. Um, and then we go to ADLs. So hand strength often can be a problem uh, as well as fatigue. So I don't want anybody to have to exert themselves so much to hold on to something that it's going to exhaust you and then you don't want to do anything else. So let's just make it all easier. My favorite, favorite thing is the um, rubber shelf liner. I use it for so much around my own house that I'm I, I probably have tons of rolls of this just stashed in different places. I use it under my cutting board because I, I have a you know hard surface countertop that cutting board wants to fly around all the time. So put a little strip of that under my cutting board, use it to open jars, um, use it under rugs, use it, um, I can use it in between hospital beds and the frame. Sometimes the mattress wants to slide around in that metal frame. Uh, cut a big long piece of that, maybe a couple pieces of that, and it'll stick, stick just great. Um, the bottom, bottom left-hand corner there, uh, Plasti Dip or liquid, like a liquid dip stuff that, um, that rubberizes. So they have some that, are, that you can paint on. Um, I, I want Flex Seal liquid, I think is another one. Um, I think you can have spray. I think you can have the, the dip part and then um, it just adds a good grip to anything. And some you can paint on, I think too. Tennis racket wrap um, or racquetball racket, whatever rack, racket you, wrap you can find. Um, this can help just give you a little bit more grip. It can help cushion things. I have also used it on um, wheelchair rims before. So just to give you a little bit of extra um, uh, grip on that rim, because sometimes those metal rims can be really hard to grab. Um, anything where you might have to have a good grip um, that that probably won't be getting too wet. The racquetball stuff doesn't work great. Um, Dysum. Dysum is something that your therapist will definitely know about. Not everybody outside of therapy knows about it, but you can buy this online. Um, it is kind of the more expensive <laughs> shelf liner, <laughs> um, but it's great. You can wash it. It's got a good tackiness to it. Um, Darla actually uses this because Dave will sit on the leather sofa and start to slide a little bit. So a little bit of Dyson kind of helps hold him up there. And again, under wheelchair cushions, furniture, um, keeping mattresses from sliding. But my little asterisk down at the bottom, please, please be aware of that. Um, it is, it, it can trap liquid. It is not permeable. So if it's in a place where maybe there's going to be some extra liquid or you're going to be sweating or anything like that, please don't use it for very long or don't have it against any kind of skin. Okay. Next. This is a uh, soap on a rope or in a pantyhose. This is a knee high that I just buy a box of knee highs from the dollar store. Um, and you literally get a box of them for a dollar and throw a, uh, a soap in a, inside there, tie it on to a grab bar, a faucet, anything like that. And I did this in, initially for a gentleman who did not want to use liquid soap. He just, he hated it. He couldn't do the pump. And um, so this just tied on next to his, his uh, shower chair and he was able to grab it, lather up, and just drop it and let go so it didn't fall on the floor or anything like that. So I like this is um, for reading, you're working on a tablet, anything like that. It's, it is the easiest, cheapest thing you can do. Three ring binder with two big um, rubber bands. Can't get more simple than that. 
Uh, you can tuck stuff underneath a rubber band. Um, you can just set it on top, use it as just a, um, a lap tray. This, the one in the middle, I actually taped two three ring binders together because we needed a little bit more height on that. And then again, the infamous pool noodle, I sliced it in half and just stuck it on the end there so that the stuff didn't slide off. And then the third one is not mine. I wish it was because I love it, but it's the um, pants hanger holding up a magazine and keeping that open for you, which I think is great if you're going to, you know, maybe follow a recipe or something. That's awesome. And um, bed alarms. I have a lot of people asking me for bed alarms and I'm not a big fan of bed alarms. So I usually will recommend this instead. Um, I love this thing and, and it has worked out for every single person that I have recommended it for. It is a cheap driveway alarm. So I've had people take the driveway alarm, set it at the foot of the bed on the floor facing the head of the bed. So if anything drops off the bed, if a hand drops down, if a foot drops down, anything, it will alert wherever that other part of the alarm is. You can plug that in anywhere in the house and you get a little doorbell. So it doesn't alarm the person who's maybe made the movement in bed, but it also will notify the other person if they happen to be on um, other ends of the house. So I do like that one and very inexpensive. Uh, for ramp safety, um, I don't know how many people have, have actually been in a power chair, gone up and down a ramp by themselves, especially if they're a caregiver, it's really scary. Um, you can't always see each side of the ramp. So you do this and then instruct the person who's driving the chair to try to keep that um, orange tape in between their two foot plates, if they have two foot plates. If they have a single foot plate, then you can put a little piece of orange tape in the very center of the foot plate and say, just match up your two orange tapes and make sure they stay together. That way, you know, your wheels are gonna stay on the ramp, there's no, riding off one way or the other and it just it gives you a little bit more sense of um of safety going up and down um and it could be any ramps it could be the ramp to your front door back door um it can be places in the house where you need to make sure this is exactly where the i need to turn with my power chair so i don't run into the door um you know doing a little a little tape tape guide can be good um Last one is simple communication. Um, I know Jackie's done this before too. Um, is this is actually a laser pointer that I got on Amazon. I think it's actually a uh, a, a gun um, laser. <laughs> so it is really inexpensive and it doesn't weigh hardly anything. And I think for that reason that that's why I got it. Um, it is magnetized to this hat. I just put a magnet on the other side of the hat and so we could move it around wherever you need it. That laser used with some kind of communication board, um, which you can always get from, from Jackie <laughs> or from your therapist or whomever, um, is a super simple way to do quick communication of being able to do very small head movements and be able to point to things at the board. Not all people are completely comfortable with eye gaze or have the ability to, to, to get that kind of equipment because it's very expensive. So this is a, a good, you know, inexpensive way to do that. All right. And that's, that's me and one of my babies. <laughs> so thanks so much. Um, I will be happy to ask, uh, answer questions when we're done. All, all right. right. Thank, thanks so much, go. Karen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think when the slides started, I believe they started getting clearer. So that's what the chat said. So um, so hopefully, Darla, yours, <laughs> my internet works well and, and broadcast mm -hmm. that clearly. Um, all right, so let me let me start your share. So so for so Darla's our second speaker, and um, and Darla, she's been um, a, your longtime caregiver to your husband Dave. So she has <laughs> husband Dave uh, for about over ten years now, um, and Darla is also a registered nurse. So I really look forward to hearing her presentation, and um, just give me about a minute, and yes. I will try to get your slides up. Thank you. Can anybody hear me? Am I on, Jackie? 
Yes, you're very clear to me. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> so I'm just going to chat a little bit. I want to say if you haven't caught how wonderful Karen Wallace is, she's really awesome. She's our OT over at the Boise VA, and I've known her for several years. She helps us get us stuff. So if you're wondering, how do I get all this stuff? You know, your OTs are really great for that, as is Jackie. And I've known her. She gets me all kinds of things. She modifies things to make it work for Dave and I. She's just, she's fabulous. They're not a dime a dozen. Jackie and Karen are great um, for that. And not only that, but Karen's just a great person. So thank you, Karen. Thank you, Jackie. And thank you, ALS Association, for having us. And I wanted to say a shout out to all the people that are joining us today, um, all the brave people with ALS. What a journey that you are on. To all of the ALS caregivers that are on today, you and I understand each other. Only an ALS caregiver really understands another ALS caregiver. So shout out to y'all. We are really, truly the true heroes behind everything sometimes. And so shout out to you all. And to all the rest of you, hello. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so my name is Darla, and I've been a caregiver for over 50 years. My father had multiple sclerosis for 43 years, and three of those years, my husband had ALS. So I literally at the age of 10 is when I began becoming a caregiver to help my mom out on a farm where there was, we lived in Timbuktu, and there was no such thing as help. So we've been doing it quite a long time. Um, today, I'm going to talk just a little bit about advocacy. See. And there's two aspects I would like to just kind of share with everybody. Uh, early on, it was who was the person that was going to be the go-to person in our situation? That happened to be me. And from there, I developed a team. So I'm Dave's best voice. And we, we do things together. And my support team helps, but they come to me. They don't independently do anything. And my husband doesn't independently do anything. We work as a team to get everything together. But I'm the go-to person. So I am Dave's advocate. Advocate. The other advocate I want to kind of emphasize today is um, caregivers. Um, my perspective is from a caregiver. I am an RN, but really as a caregiver, it's not really about so much about being an RN as it is just being a really strong advocate. So let's see. Mm, probably next slide, Jackie. Oh, okay. I was hoping it would work this time. <laughs> it didn't go. All right. Next slide. <laughs> Um, so um, I would like to introduce my husband, Dave. This was taken a couple of years ago, and he has sporadic bulbar ALS with the resultant complete bilateral upper and lower limb loss. Whew, whew. What that means is that 11 years ago, we don't know why he got it, but he got ALS, and it started in his mouth. That's bulbar. And 11 years later, it has progressed to both of his arms and both of his legs. So he is a 24-hour day care. Um, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and we've done it for years. Now, you can't do that and do it well unless you have a game plan. We are a team. Dave doesn't do it. We don't make any major decisions unless both of us are in agreement. If he doesn't want to do something, then I, I abide by that. If I don't want to do something because I'm tired and it's just too much to do for any one person, then we together come up with a solution. But we are a team. We don't independ I don't just sit there and wait on Dave all day. We, we have a team effort. And that's really important to, to understand in a long term as Dave and I have been. So next slide. Thanks. So I have four keys to our approach to ALS. When he was first diagnosed, the first thing I, I did in my own mind was all ideas and information, you've already heard it twice, but all ideas and information I listen to. Now I may not use, may use or may not use anything that I've learned along the way, but I put it in a notebook thinking maybe I need it later on. But that has benefited me to take care of Dave in so many ways, because this is a massive disease with a, a massive amount of things to think about and try to come up with and figure out how to do. So all ideas are important. And you'll see some today that, oh, I'm doing that. Well, pat yourself on the back, thumbs up, you've got it and you're on the right track. The second thing that um, was really important to me was that we maintain dignity and a strong sense of purpose for Dave, which meant mental health. I didn't want him to get depressed along the way, which is kind of common in ALS. And so to do that, I had a goal. And um, 
yeah, to maintain his dignity. And we've done that. And I'm going to show you some things that we do that helps him to maintain, to maintain that. The third thing, and this is a caregiver thing, I think these are three key things to being a successful in this endeavor. And the first one is being proactive. And if you're here today, you're already proactive. Gather as much information and ideas as you can. You don't have to use it, but maybe you will. I'm very proactive in trying to find out what I need to do. Then I get prepared. I go, well, I think I'm going to need that. So let's go get a, a, some sort of wheelchair. I got to figure out which kind of wheelchair, who am I going to go to, what are the phone numbers. I'll get myself prepared. Not that I need it today, but down the road, when I need it, when it's a week later, when I do need it, my information is there. So now I've been proactive, I've gotten prepared, and I'm flexible. Oh, yeah, I thought I needed a wheelchair next week, but I really don't. I can wait another year. Hmm. So I'm, you're always flexible on how you're approaching everything. The um, last thing I want to talk about is that today I'm just going to go with what are simple things that works best for us day in and day out. I'm going to introduce you to my home and some of the things that I do that works best for us. Um, I, I, I know a lot about complicated things, and I don't want to talk about complicated equipment. At the very end, I'm going to make a list of all the equipment that I have. If somebody needs a, um, a little lesson on some of that, then maybe the ALS Association will get that. But for today, I'm just going to show you simple things. So the first simple, simple thing I'm going to show you is welcome to our home. This is our wheelchair ramp coming into the house. My husband is a true gentle soul and a gentle man. And he was overwhelmed by the idea of a wheelchair and wheelchair ramps coming into the house. He just wasn't quite ready. So we came up with, we had steps coming into our house and we decided to do a wheelchair ramp. Um, made out of concrete. We pulled it out and it's just a gentle slope and it comes right into the house. And if you um, can see, I have a screen door that's open and that's done intentionally. Next screen. Um, I did that intentionally because when he was, when he finally did get to the wheelchair part of, of his life and we were going in and out of the house, my arms were full and I had groceries or I have his, his drinks and I had this and this and this and his wheelchair and I'm trying to hold open the door, not and try not to let my toes get run over by that bad thing. <laughs> I decided I needed something to do. So I went to a hardware store and picked up a pneumatic um, door opener. And this actually, where I'm pointing to, that actually belongs at the bottom of a door, but I put it upside down at the top and you can push, I'm pointing to a button and you just push the button and it holds the door open. So he can take his time going in and out, aim so you don't hit the door as you're going in and out. And he goes in and out and I can go in and out and bring all the stuff that I need need to in and out. And then the next slide or right next to it, you show my hand and all I do is I push it and it goes closed. The one thing I like about my wheelchair ramp is that it, um, it doesn't announce to the wide world that I have um, an ALS, I have a disabled person in my house. It's a safety fish feature. Um, I didn't want to announce to everybody, hey, we're wheelchair and there's pills in my home. And in today's world, that's kind of um, an important thing. So it just looks like a sidewalk. Nobody knows who lives in my house and that I don't make myself any more vulnerable than I have to be. So I like a, my wheelchair ramp and how we do things going in and out of the house. So thank you. Next slide. <laughs> um, this is, um, I'm going to start with just very simply done. What do I do every day with all that stuff? Do you see the shelf liner? Mm -hmm. Shelf liner is your best friend. <laughs> There's a shelf liner, Velcro, a glue gun, hard cardboard. I use a lot of really, really hard cardboard, foam of all different kinds, um, thick, thin, and styrofoam. And a lot of that comes from Karen's stuff that she sends to me in a box. And here's all this styrofoam. I go, oh, I can use it for this and I can use it for that. Well, what are we going to do with all these things that are very simple? This is a great way to be flexible. So the next slide. These are some of the simple things that I do that makes Dave feel um, it, Dave can do his things that he does every day. So such things as a pens, toothbrush, chap, stick and remotes. He likes brushing his own teeth. And when I tried to bite, brush his teeth, he would just bite down on the toothbrush and wouldn't let go because he's just like, I want to brush my own teeth. Well, that was important to him. So we can make that happen. So I got an electric toothbrush and shelf liner and I wrapped it until it was really, really thick. And I put some rubber bands and foam on it. You can easily take it off and rewash it. But remember, Dave doesn't have any arms or hands. So how does he brush his teeth? Well, I, I take his wheelchair or he can go, 
have him go just right up next to the edge of our counter and I place his hands on the counter. They don't go anywhere because he can't move them on his own independence. So once they're in place, I can make it like a, a little cup of his fingers and I'll put the toothbrush in there and he'll move his head up and down to brush his own teeth. And it's quite a feat to watch, <laughs> it really is. But my oldest son came home and he watched Dave brush his own teeth with a man that doesn't have any arms. And he said, oh my gosh, mom, did you see dad brush his teeth? And both of them would come out and they were just grinning. And so it was a very self-satisfying thing for him to be able to accomplish that. He likes chapstick, so I did the foam on the chapstick. And anybody with ALS will know that there's documents, documents, and documents to sign. So those are a couple of the pins that I've adopted along the way with some rubber bands and foam. And you just keep adding in bigger and bigger and, you know, more whatever works for you. But that's those two ideas work the best for Dave. And the bottom one is our remote control. And I put it on a hard cardboard because, um, well, I had tried um, a big button TV controller, but they don't always, always work with all of our TVs. And so I was going, yeah, let's just use what was meant for the TV. And so that's why I put this on a cardboard and I, it's really, you can't bend the cardboard and it's a little divot in there and put some glue on it and rubber bands. And so it doesn't move anywhere. And now it becomes a remote that I can place anywhere. So when it was his hands, his hands did it. But when his hands didn't work, then I could put it down by his feet and his feet can do it. His nose could do it. It's just flexible for any kind of um, things. So they're just simple, easy things to do every day for everyday life. So next slide. This is my very first project. It was shoes. Um, <laughs> Dave wanted to put on his own shoes. He was a runner, so he likes his sneakers. And he wanted to put on his own shoes and take off his shoes and they're on off on off all day. Well, that gets old as a caregiver to have to put the shoes on and off and he was at work and the co workers were so we came up with something. And I said, you know, hey, it's just too bad we can't just make a loop so we the fingers that don't work we can just kind of hook it and then you know you could put your foot in so we got some um shoe elastic shoelaces and i put those on and tightened them up to how tight dave wanted them but they stretch enough that we can pull it open and he would just guide his fingers and then kind of hook it like i have my fingers there and he just hook it and then keep the um tongue there in position so that he could just slide his foot in and out. So I took a shoelace, cut it, and I took them out my sewing machine and did a satin stitch and hooked that on. And those shoes um, I did 11 years ago, I still use them to this day. He could, if he wanted to, put on his own shoes. It's too much effort, but the nice thing is that it works for me. So I can put his shoes on, boop, boop, and they're on, off, on, Oh. And he needs shoes on to run his wheelchair, which you saw that Karen had. He's a foot control wheelchair. So he has to have a shoe on when he drives his wheelchair. So this has worked 11 years for us. And it was my very first project. Okay. So not to put the sewing machine away, but we have a hospital bed with an alternating air mattress. Thumbs up to alternating air mattresses, except when you're trying to sleep and you're trying to keep the sheets on. Well, he gets a little bit moving at night, or if we get him up and down, the sheets pop right off the bed. And I'm going, okay, after a week of every hour putting the sheets back on the bed, I was grumpy. He was grumpy. The whole house was grumpy. So the sewing machine came out. <laughs> and I put on, I sewed on some ties at key places on his bed. And I tie his sheets and his mattress pads to the, not the bed frame, but to where the knees go up and down the head of his bed, so that the sheets all stay on place and they never come off anymore and we sleep. I also put um, little ties on his shower chair so that he doesn't have to sit on that cold um, plastic. Sometimes he's on there quite a while and I can just take those old towels and I have a little tie, they hook on and then I just wash those. I don't have his little footrest on, on his shower chair on the lower left there, but I take a mattress pad. So whatever you can think of, whatever you can do, thumbs up that, that really works well for just making life easier for me and life easier for Dave. I think. So does he eat? Yes, he does. 
and he eats very well. <laughs> so I'm just uh, gonna show you some of the things that we start with. He loves his straws. So I, he always makes me take a picture of all of his straws and he uses all of them for, for a variety of things. One straw is specific for his insure. Um, one straw is for his coffee. Um, they're just meant for anything. They work really great for him. And it's a great practice to keep that lung capacity going. Um, straws are really great for that. It takes a little brush to wash them in and out, but they are reusable and they works so great. The three lollipops on the top there. <laughs> Everybody loves a good dum-dum, don't they? Um, Dave does e-stim to stimulate his swallowing so that he um, can strengthen that muscle to help him with his swallowing and choking. And we've done that for quite a number of years. But he also does like exercises within the mouth and that's a dum-dum. And a simple way, if you ever wanna practice your swallowing and your muscles in your mouth, there's 300 of them, a dum-dum is a good thing. You just slide this dum-dum from one side to another. There's a whole set of exercises to do with them, but it's a simple simple, easy way to try to keep at bay some of those choking issues if you start with a dum-dum. Next to that is applesauce. It only took me two years to get Dave to try some applesauce, but when he did, now it makes the pictures that we show everybody. Um, he didn't like applesauce. He didn't realize that there was pear sauce, um, blueberry sauce, peach sauce, there was apricot, mango, you name it, they're different flavors. And we use that all the time now for all of his medication. And sometimes when he gets choking or something stuck in his throat and he can't quite swallow it down, he can't get it up from the cough assist, a little bit of applesauce and he, it will clear that whole palate all the way down and he can get over a spit real easy. We started with silverware there to the left with the big handled ones and that worked for a good number of, uh, a good couple of years. But then all of a sudden he couldn't use that because he couldn't use his hands. So what we, what we have done, next slide. Um, so the way I feed Dave now is burritos. Burritos, burritos, burritos. How many burritos? Well, I do a 30 day prep of burritos for Dave. There's some on the left side, that's his breakfast. And on the right side is his lunch and dinner. And I put everything in a burrito. Texturally, that flour burrito is easier for him to swallow than all that loose food. And his tongue doesn't always work. But when it's in the burrito, he can get it back in the back of his throat and he doesn't choke as easily. So we have done burritos for a long time. We have steak burritos, peanut butter and jelly. We have um, pizza, lasagna, spaghetti. You think about it, you can put it in there. And yes, I have tried soup. <clears throat> the picture that show I have there is pumpkin spice donut burrito for dessert. And I use cheese as a glue. I heat it up for 30 seconds, roll it up, put a little plastic so it doesn't stick to the aluminum foil, roll it up and put it in the deep freeze and he's good to go. Well, um, over there, you can see Dave is eating and he's happy. So why do I go to all this fuss for him? It's his dignity and it gives him a sense of purpose and he can do it independently. You bet we're gonna do that. This is where Karen came in and discovered snake clamp. And we have a snake clamp that's a suction to our counter and it has a little cup and I just toss a little burrito in there and Dave can just bend over and he'll start eating his own burrito. At some point, he won't be able to sit in that chair and that snake clamp will attach to his wheelchair. And once it's on the wheelchair, he'll still be able to eat his own burritos because we're gonna adapt and I'm already forward thinking. But you can see how happy he is that he can still do this little thing 11 years later. And I'm pretty proud of him. Mm, sometimes there's choking. Sometimes there's some spasms. Sometimes they just need a little bit of help. Um, this card was um, a friend of mine got it and I went to the store and bought one just like hers. So we both have the very same thing. I really like having a cart for station um, that is movable. This card is a cough assist on the top, suction machine in the middle, and on the bottom shelf, is all of the supplies that go with all of that stuff. And I can roll that cart, like if he's eating, it can be right there. If I need to go to his office, I can roll it right there. And he has a little bit of a choking issue. I can push it into the bedroom. I can push it anywhere. The cart is a great station for this type of setup. To the right is Dave's um, BiPAP trilogy that he uses at night only. Um, because he doesn't breathe real well at night, but this kind of helps him. And I wanted to show you these together because 
when you get all this stuff, there's all kinds of masks, tubes, chambers, and you're expected to know when and how often to change them, how to clean them, and everything there is to know where to get them all. And it is a handful. And I was having a hard time keeping up with when I have to change everything. It was just like, oh, I have no clue, but I know some tube needs to be changed. So I finally got a black marker and I write right on the tube when it needs to be changed. And you can see this picture is a little bit older, but it says 10, 20, 20. When does that tube need to be changed? You bet, I know when it is. And that works so slick. Um, my, one of my biggest fears with Dave was if he lost his voice, how in the world would I ever know if he needed something? And Karen talked about the bed alarms. And so I'm going to show you how we do it in our house. Ding dong doorbell is how we do it. Thanks. So I have a, I'm going to talk about one of my team members and that's my youngest son. And so I'm just going to showcase a few of the things that he does for us. Um, these are doorbells of, that I use in my house on a daily basis, and they work great. The first picture is the bidet, um, and that is for Dave's dignity so that he can wash his own little fanny without me going in there and helping him. And it's a, foot con it's a remote, so I can put it on the wall, I could put it on the floor, it's whatever part of your body works the best, and that's how we do that. Or I can take the remote and squirt him from outside. Mm, I'm okay with that, but he likes to do it himself. So if you hear him giggling in the bathroom, you know he's playing with the bidet. Um, when he's all done, then I have that doorbell right next to it, and he'll ding, him, ding me with the doorbell. And with that doorbell, um, it was a little bit too far in. So I take that styrofoam from a box that Karen gave me and I glued it, made it a little bit higher so that his toe could, could push it. And that worked really good for him. To the right is different doorbells that I have in the house at different places, like by his, in his office or just everywhere. Um, but the top one I wanted to show you is a light it's a remote control for a lamp. And I put a remote control light bulb in the lamp. And in his office, he can turn on his own light whenever he wants with his toe. Um, so he will, it has on, off, brighter, dimmer, or whatever. And then there's all the doorbells there that he can call me on that we, that we use along the well, along the way. So next one. So this call light is special for his bed. Um, it's really hard for him to push that teeny little doorbell on his bed, but I knew about Able Net, and they make these soft cushion um, call lights, but this call light is meant for kids, disabled kids, to run all of their toys. Well, I didn't want to run a toy. I wanted to run a doorbell, and this is where my team member, youngest son, came over, and I said, here, Dane, here's a doorbell. Here's a, uh, I want you to take the guts of that, put it in this brown thing so that it can talk to my doorbell receiver out in the uh, out when dad's sleeping and I'm out doing things in the kitchen he can call me whenever he needs something and so he getting he got in his car went home with his wife and said mom wants me to do this and, and by George he did so he put that in there it's a remote I have some velcro you can see on the right that it's attached to his bed rail and he just taps it really lightly and it goes off it's a great thing so I appreciate him doing that but it's utilizing my team Hmm. Well, my husband um, is very with the program. He has no arms, no hands. So what do we do all day long? He retired and here I have a husband. I'm not good at it. And frankly, I don't think he wants me to entertain him all day. Um, but what are we going to do? So we played off of his strengths and he likes computer stuff. It's a mental health thing and he entertains himself all day. It's um, a lot of this stuff is going to go into a computer technical thing. So that's where the team member, my youngest son comes in. I don't do it. He does it. The first thing I do is because he started in his mouth and then it went down to his limbs. The strongest part of Dave's body is his foot. 
And so he couldn't do computer work with his hand or a mouse. We needed a foot mouse. And the foot mouse can cost anywhere from $700 to $1,500. I didn't want to play around with that kind of money with a mouse that may or may not work, that may or may not work with my computer. So we opted for a little bit simpler of a solution. And this is our foot mouse. And um, Dave, it works really great for Dave. You can see that his foot is made just for his foot. I use a neuro sock. He has a neuro sock. If you don't know what that is, you can always holler at me. I'll let you know. I have specific neuro socks for this for, and then some for his bathroom too. But this is a foot mouse. And if I have enough time, I'll just, I'm going to go quickly on these next slides to show you that I actually make this. So next slide. This is my simply done. Again, I'm using just um, foam glue gun a screwdriver. I use my um, shelf liner. I went to the dollar store and got a spoon and the little mouse came from the thrift store that my son picked up. Okay. And so uh, how do we make that? This is me and I take a screwdriver, I get, look inside of it, I clean it all up because they are dirty. <laughs> and where the yellow thing is pointing, I'm going to make a little hole in there to put the spoon in. Okay. So I open it up and this is the inside of the mouse and I take and I take my drill because I'm not very good with a knife. I'll take a drill and I make a whole bunch of drills right along that where that yellow mark was and kind of make a slot for the spoon to come in. I take the tip of the spoon, I bend it, bend it over, drill a hole and I fit it in there and I screw that thing right in there and next slide. I put it all back together. And then I'll add a little bit of foam and a little bit of the shelf liner and it is measured to his foot and he's ready to go. Well, what does he do with that foot mouse? He's faster than I am. He can read his mail and most things on the computer has um, a drop down box. I'll say read aloud. So he'll read all of his email out loud because he can't see as well without his reading glasses anymore. So it'll read aloud for all kinds of things. Um, and every computer has an um, onboard uh, keyboard. And so he just, you know, flips the keyboard up and he does everything with his foot on the keyboard and he can go to any website. He can do anything with that thing. He created his own little um, spreadsheet that has um, things that says read aloud, but he'll say call Darla. He'll put in the phone number, call Alexa, call Darla. And then Alexa will call me from wherever I'm at. And he can call his sons or if I am not, if I have like something happens to me, he can call 911. So he has that all programmed into his computer that he controls with his foot. Okay. Um, so um, knowing that he will only be short term with that foot, I've already thinking ahead. And this is where my youngest son comes in. He's a techie dude. I don't understand what he does. I'm okay with that. This is a, a computer specialized foot control that he made for us. And it does involve an Xbox controller that I got from the VA with all those little colored buttons are able net light touch buttons. Next one. And this is him. He had an idea. He's this is what we're going to do. Take the stool apart. We're going to make something, Mom. I said, okay, dear. And next slide. And this is him when he's all done. And him and his friend, they went in. This is a script modified to a computer so that it works. So if you buy this stuff and put it together, it will not work. You need somebody that can go into the computer and do a script modified kind of thing. But all the cool thing that he can do. I don't know if that'll play Jack here or not. Yeah. Hi, my name is Dane Bird, and this is my father, David Bird. He has ALS, which makes his hands um, weak and he can't use, but his feet are still good. So we used an Xbox adaptive controller for multiple controls for his feet. Doesn't necessarily mean it has to be used for feet, it can be used for arms or many other people with needs. And here, my friend Nick Frisch, um, partner, uh, is going to show you how it works. Let me explain a little bit about the Xbox controller that we're using. So this is the Xbox Adaptive Controller, and what's nice is it has a bunch of ports on the top that allows us to plug in these AbleNet buttons and uh, control various programs on the computer. Uh, so for his use, what we have it set up doing is playing movies. So we have this software called Big Box, and he needs to be able to control that somehow. So what we've done is we've programmed these buttons to allow him to pause, play, 
select the movies that he wants to play. However, these buttons can be programmed for any other application. It doesn't necessarily have to be used with Big Box. Uh, so we'll give a little demonstration about uh, what these buttons are going to do for him while he's using Big Box, and um, we'll go through the buttons. This is the down button. This is the up button, so you can select up and down through the menu system. Here is the left and right buttons. Same thing for selecting through the menus. Here is the select button, so you can select a movie, play, and pause that same movie. If he uh, gets into a menu that he doesn't want to get into or should be into, uh, like if he accidentally selects the wrong movie, he can get back to the previous menu by pushing the big button here. And when he's completely done watching movies, he can exit the program with this button. And this button will exit the current application that's running. It's not just Big Box. If he's in some sort of web browser or other application, he can push that button and it will close that program. Uh, so I guess with that, we will have him give a demonstration. So let's select the green button for our movies. Yeah, it's Alien okay for you to watch? Yeah. Alright, so that's like the green <laughs> button. <laughs> that's gonna be load the movie. Alright, and we can let's try to turn, turn down the volume a little bit. So let's select the black button. Let's turn it down. Oh, that's too much. Let's select up for blue button there. There we go. Perfect. Uh, let's, let's try I've seen the intro. Mm. We can skip the intro by hitting the red button. Yeah, it's kind of fast forward a little bit. Oh, maybe. Oh, wait. What was that name? We can go back. What if we hit the yellow button? Who is that? Oh, yeah. Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> and let's pause it right there. I gotta read that name slowly. So you can so, hit the green yeah. button. Yeah. And it will pause it. Yeah. Perfect. Well, it's building toward aliens. All right. Well, let's let's done watching this movie. So let's back out of it. Perfect. <clears throat> Back out even further, and then, and, and let's kill this program. Perfect. So we can do that with even web applications. Thank you for watching this video, and we are a company called Mabel Mason. We like to make fun things like this. Thank you. And that's my son. I wanted to share with you that that was the second time they've used that. So it's very user friendly. And they really have, they don't do that for many people, but they do do it for their parents, which I really appreciate. This is the list of all the things that um, I know quite a bit about, but I didn't go into today. There are many other things we are. I want to thank you for your time today. If you have questions, please stay on and we can, we will try to answer them. Karen and I will answer them the best we can, but you guys are amazing. <laughs> okay all right awesome presentations thank you again so so much uh darla and karen um i learned some stuff i love that foot mouse that's that was my favorite actually <laughs> <laughs> um it's like why didn't i think of that uh, okay so um <laughs> um so we can we can actually open up i'm going to open up the floor now my email because i sent out the invite today and um, i want to thank everyone for being patient with our technical difficulties as well especially karen during her presentation no um, <laughs> thank, jackie thank you so much and if anybody mm -hmm. has other questions then Send them to Jackie and we'd yep. be happy to get out and get back Absolutely. to you too. Thank you, Jackie. Sure. Okay. All right, you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Right. Okay. Bye. Bye.